Hello there and welcome to this video on Conversations on Consciousness. My name is Ladrin and today I'm going to be speaking about food. Why is food important? Why is food important for every occasion? Food is important for connecting, for creating memories, for connecting with people ourselves. It's a relationship we have with food and what is our relationship with food? What makes us hungry. Digestion doesn't just start in the, in the stomach, it starts by the eyes. When we find food appealing and attractive and exotic and tasteful and flavoursome and nourishing, food is nourishing to our bodies. And so in order to fuel our bodies, we need to eat nutrition, nutritional food that is good for us. Now there are many foods out there which to me are dead foods. And a lot of these are takeaway foods. The foods that we eat aren't fast foods at all. They're very slow foods, very dense, filled with all sorts of preserv preservatives, etc. And the best foods are made at home with family or friends. And this is where we start to create memories. Now we have these different celebrations. At the moment currently I'm filming this in the time of the coronavirus and you know what's happening in the world currently here is is really you know heartbreaking and and emotional. However we have to remember the past times of our family traditions or friend, friends or the memories that we've had. The times that we've been in weddings and birthdays, graduations in baby showers, in people during illness, you know, this is the time of where food helps connect us with people. Perhaps that meeting, the very first date that you met your partner, or a, a person that you love very much, the very first time you sat down and had a meal together and ate. The relationship we have with food helps us connect with people. It goes back to our ancestral calling of being the hunter-gatherer, being the provider, and eating together. It's something that we all do and so we have something very much the same that we have in common that we can share food and substance that we need when we are hungry we have this feeling in our stomach for me during like cleanses and cleaning I know that that hunger feeling is is the stomach shrinking back to its original size you know that you know eating a lot you get used to it but then your stomach starts to shrink back and it's almost like a signal telling you that hey like you know I haven't been fed in a while like send me more food <laughs> but some people love food for the taste for the experience um, others it has to be a, a job and I know that from from you know doing a lot of like sports and activity and especially weightlifting to put on weight I mean you, you had to eat like every two or three hours and eating every two or three hours was very draining and tiring for me. But for some people, body body you know builders and uh, weightlifters etc., they need to eat a lot of food, and it has to be enjoyable, and not just enjoyable, but healthy and and good for the soul. So you know what what does the relationship of food have with us and our families and everybody? It's memories. It's creating a culture and the traditions that we have, such as like. Christmas or um, you know other traditions around the world that are celebrated in, in events of, of times where food is celebrated. Halloween, the Day of the Dead in Mexico, uh, England we have you know Christmas, we have Easter, we have chocolate eggs you know as a surprise and um, you know treats you know Valentine's Day we have you know chocolates given sometimes or food or we have a date. And it's usually the thing that we, we do when we ask someone out on a date that we want to, you know, when we're romantically interested, we're, we're attracted to, it's like, do you want to go out on a date with me? And sometimes it is a cinema, watching a film, or it could be actually going to dinner and eating. And why is that? It's because I think that, I believe that the relationship we have with food and we can see how the other person eats, we want to share those memories, that excitement, we want to share what we love and say, hey, do you want to try this? This is really nice. And then sometimes the other person will be like, no, I, I like this. And it's like, oh, okay, you like that. And so we learn how to, how to 
you know, having a relationship with the food. And I'm not just talking about food on the table, but having a relationship with the vegetables or the, the meat or the, you know, the, the plants or the fruit that, you know, that we're having. I mean, me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm plant-based, so I don't have meat in my diet. Um, however, it's nice to know how other people eat, you know, in, in ways with, with meat and everything. But I'm more interested in plant-based uh, foods. And, you know, we can learn a lot from others. And this is what connects us, you know, because it's like the pleasures that we have in life, you know, pleasures through romance, through, through sex, making love, um, music, you know, art, um, dance, clothing, fashion. But the biggest thing that we all have in common is our taste buds. You know, we have taste. We all have different tastes, but we can share those different ways of eating. And when I was in uh, London, I found this lovely vegan cafe, uh, Ethiopian uh, vegan cafe. And you didn't use uh, knives or forks or cutlery or spoons, but you had like this wrap. Uh, I can't remember where it was made from, but you dipped the wrap in like these vegetables and you ate it that way. It was you using the the food as a utensil to, to, to eat. And this is how food has spread around the world in different cultures. You know, curry in England as an, isn't originated from England. It was an Indian food that was inspired and and be more traditional in, in England. So now we have like things like um, a pint and a pint and a curry. <laughs> a pint of beer and a curry you find in a restaurant or you know the local Indian uh, you know takeaway or the, even the Chinese um, you know so it's like it's a traditional thing that is now in England but was never part of England itself we have our traditional uh, English breakfast our, our fry up you know bacon eggs beans mushrooms and toast and, and and other things and it's like that that's what makes different cultures unique when I was in Bali Indonesia the, the foods there was beautiful rices tempeh different vegetables the way they cook it and you know prepare it is not like how we do things here in england when you go to china or you know parts of asia you're going to find that there's different like things like rice noodles and noodles and and other different spices and this is the thing of of world coming together is that the world trading was originally just to do with the trading of spices and different foods and that's what's kept the world going because of the different cultures and the different areas of the world where certain foods grow. You know, bananas aren't native to England, they're native to other warmer climates in the U in, in the world, but they're brought over in the UK and now we see it as a in our fruit bowls in our homes with grapes and bananas and these exotic fruits that we don't really have. You know, even oranges, it's like vitamin C. How do we get vitamin C in England? <laughs> you know, we get them through other things that are found, you know, vegetables and fruits that are here. But the world trading of food has, has connected us. It's, it's understanding about cultures and the way things have been. You know, it's understanding people's lives, their manners, their, you know, and the way they eat. There are some... Uh, cultures around the world who sit, you know, on the floor and, and they eat, you know, teas like the, the Japanese or the Chinese, I can't remember which, which culture, but their relationship with tea and the way they have tea ceremonies. I went to a tea ceremony uh, five years ago and it was the preparation of tea, letting it be a certain temperature and then serving out and it was something that you're receiving in the process. In my events I give people cacao. It is not a native um, fruit of of the UK. It comes from the cacao pod, which is huge, and inside is cacao beans. When I was in Costa Rica, I had the beautiful chance of actually seeing a cacao pod, you know, on a tree in front of my eyes, and it was really nice. And I saw them open up, and they were like white beans, and it looked very different. And inside those white beans was the the dark cacao the chocolate that we see so you know and this is the cacao the word means you know fruit of the gods it was an exchange of currency and that's how it's connected us with 
the ceremonial um, ways across across the world. The Aztecs, the Mayans, you know, Central America use cacao an exchange of currency, and other places use use spices in, as an exchange because people loved the taste. It was something that they were gaining, and also understanding about the health benefits of the antioxidants and the the, the enzymes that are enzymes the proteins and everything in different foods that can help you know the, the the healing as well in england there's wild garlic but you know cultivated it is bigger garlic i use garlic as a medicine although it is a great herb a spice to use in different things me i i use garlic as as a medicine itself to to prevent like colds and flus and keeping my body safe when I had a really bad tooth, a really aching bad tooth, the only thing that really saved me was clove oil uh, for numbing the area and taking um, a garlic which was able to, to help clean the area and get rid of any pain, which was really not, not such straight away pain, but um, preventing infection, which was really, really powerful. Food is what connects us to, to people, to, to the world. and. You know, having gardens isn't, you know, just something to look at, but it's something to enjoy. It is a job. And, you know, like here in England, at, you go, especially in the, the countryside here in Somerset, in the southwest of England, you, you go for a drive uh, when, when, when you could. At the moment, you can't so much. But people put outside their houses, like, you know, fruit. Across the road here, we have... There was a like a basket with a picture of a pear saying, you know, pears, you know, put money in the box if you like like some pears. You know, because people have so much fruit growing in their in their gardens that they want to give give that to, to people. They they want to share their love of the fruits that are growing in their gardens. Here we have thirty apple trees on the retreat on the the retreat's land. I get too many we get too many apples growing every year. I don't know what to do with them. You know, I can't eat them all. <laughs> a lot of them I juice, um, but I get wheelbarrowfuls, loads of apples. There's too many. And I'm not here all the time to, to, to cultivate them and pick them. So a lot of them fall to the floor and they have to be picked up and they're half rotten and eat, you know, eaten. But the wildlife has it as well. And that's part of, you know, giving to nature itself. But our relationship with food and people is something so beautiful that we have passed down recipes and, and meals that we, we relate to loved ones. You know, it's like, oh, you know, great Auntie, Auntie Mary or, you know, my nan used to make such and such. My nan actually used to always make every year three or four uh, Christmas puddings for the family. She would make it herself with the nuts, with the raisins, whatever is in there and always put brandy inside and everyone loved it and it's not just the food that is there it's the love of the food it is the nourishment that the the giving that you're not feeling just the the food itself but you're you are receiving the love that you have from your love your loved one you know when your partner makes your meal you feel the love from it that it's it's homemade it's a complete different taste that you find in the shop it, because you have this you have this business like like feel to these products that you get and although you have to buy certain products in the shop to make stuff at home you're putting your energy into it you're putting your magic you know your, your vibe into this you're putting your own spices for me I intuitively cook I have comments which is like oh you made that so fast, like with what? Like with what was in the kitchen? I was like, yeah, I just made it up, <laughs> and the best recipes come from that are made up. You know, it's experimenting. I've had many failed experiments of making food in the past, um, and some of them have been terrible. Some have been great, and I can't replicate. Or I've, you know, learned things from others. And that's the thing that we learn from people is that we learn how to cook different foods. You know, I've learned some great things, you know, like uh, banana pancakes. Um, sorry, yeah, pancakes made with bananas and, and oats, you know, something I, I really loved and have some great, beautiful memories because of the person that, you know, made them for me. And, you know, how, how beautifully they prepared them and some great memories of, you know, eating them and 
you know, feeling full. And it's like, it's that love that you give to somebody, you know. Um, I remember when I used to get food from the ashram in Glastonbury, when um, they all used to serve out food for free. And the different types of spices and the, the red cabbage and other things that are in there, which were just very beautiful. And it's something that I wouldn't do, but then I've learned how to cook by watching what people make with the dal, which is very Indian, red cabbage, um, some, some sauces, uh, vegetables, and it's like it's a different combination. And it's good to share, you know, that's the good thing is that it's not just making food for yourself, but making food for others. When I, when I make my food, I get compliments all the time saying, oh, that smells nice, what is that? And I explain, and they're like, oh, um, no meat? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm vegan. And they're like, oh, okay. And they, they judge, first of all, but then they see what I eat as well, which is quite funny. So, you know, like, food is, is an amazing thing which connects us. Imagine just going for a day or meeting up with somebody, and there's no tea or coffee, there's no biscuits, there's not anything. It's just you and them. It's great, but then you have this satisfying... Fulfill, fulfilling feeling that you have when you're eating that biscuit or you know it, it creates conversations as well you know you learn how to cook food with each other I had a I've got a good friend who's who's Greek and um, you know I, I was around their house one day and they invited another another person who was Greek and an Italian and they made this um, this food and it was just a different I had never been with other people that weren't English and it really opened up my eyes in the world of people who were very passionate about showing how to make this type of food. And I, I, I watched, I learned. It, I, didn't in, I didn't enjoy it personally. It wasn't my sort of taste. But I think I got in conversation with them and saying, oh, I said, why do you make this? I'm like, oh, my, my mum used to make this, you know, before she passed. So I think sometimes we make things because it's a memory of ours. We remember it, we like it more sometimes because of the memory. And we have it because the memory sparks that, that memory and that occasion and the remembrance more so than the flavour. It's like the flavour bringing back some memories and really creates us going back in time and remembering those experiences. A great movie that I saw recently on Disney Plus as a cartoon uh, uh, by uh, Pixar uh, called Soul and it's about this soul singer who like tries to come back to earth as a soul quite funny and um, basically he first time he's eating something boom he's getting all these memories and all these colors and he reverts back to when he was like a kid and his mum made him this meal the first time and he was like wow this is amazing so um, you know it's it's really Food teaches us in many ways to connect us. And that, that's, that's the, the, the beauty of food, of understanding about different cultures, different traditions, that when we eat a certain type of food, it reminds us of a certain time. Um, I've got a friend who I stayed with for about six months and, you know, I helped them cook. Um, well, I, you know, that I just watched and I watched how they made things. They took some time making stuff, um, but they really put lots of sauces and spices in like this big hot pot and let it keep simmering for some time to bring out all the flavors. And I really learned a little bit about cooking that way just by watching and being around. And that's the thing about being around people that you have this sense of warmness, of closeness, of like, oh, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm doing this because of that. and you don't even have to speak about what's going on. You just learn. You, you watch and learn. And, you know, making food is very important. It's one of the first survival skills that we need to know. That if you're, you're born into a world where all you're getting is always food made for you or you're getting takeaways, you're never really learning about, you know, how the process has been or where it's come from or how it's made. And I think when you have an understanding about the food, you, you have a more of appreciation about how it's made itself. So food opens up the doors to, to many possibilities of connection. And at the moment, during this coronavirus situation and social distancing, 
you know, hopefully one day we'll be able to connect with people and go to restaurants and have that laughter and, and sharing and <laughs> hopefully no food fights. But really eating together really creates memories and, and a sharing of beautiful occasions where we can really have beautiful moments of flavor of, of memories and that's what food is about is is connecting us and the, the, the worst thing I hate to see in these current times is that families the, the mother says okay kids like dinner's ready they all grab their plates and they go to their separate rooms or they're on their iPads and I think that's that's just wrong like we need to be more connected and family dinner time for family should be a time for communicating for sharing what's happened in the day sharing ideas and it's a long process it's not just eating but it's like okay so what have you been doing and it's what when you're eating you're listening you're actively listening you know to to um to the other person talk you're laughing you're sharing ideas this is why sometimes uh, businesses come together to eat food because it gives them time to enjoy the moment and to savor the moment and have some memories and to, to share. And it's something very intimate as well that you can share with a lot of people, you know, th th this food that you can share. Um, and different cultures eat in different ways, you know, uh, different religions as well. Um, very Christian uh, cultures, and I've had a I had some friends when I was younger who were complete Christian and lovely, not a problem, but it took some time to get used to because before they ate, they would, you know, sit down, pray and say some words and they used to go around the table before we can even eat. And I wasn't used to that because it's not how I was brought up. It was kind of like, okay, here's your food, eat it straight away before it gets cold. And bless her, my mum has, you know, been a great cook for you know, since I can remember and for occasions like Christmas and she puts in so much hard effort and hard work. Um, and I, I've seen that as well with other people. But really, food for people like living together should should cook together and prepare. So then like they all do their part and they, they all have, what I love to see in a, in, a, in a perfect meal of people coming together is that all the food is in the middle and there's empty plates and then people just pick what they want. And I learned that as well from um, a, a Greek friend of mine. And it was really funny because the way us English eat, you know, you put a plate in front of me, I'm going to eat it all. So there's a plate of broccoli in front of me. And I thought that was my plate and I ate the whole thing and I got told off. So it's, you know, cultures are completely different. The way, you know, we learn manners when we were very young it's about how to eat and there's no right or wrong. It's just like doing things that are comfortable for yourself. And that's what's very important, that we can teach others, you know, manners and, you know, our relationship with food. Um, I know some people who who just zone out eating their food. They're completely spaced out in a different world. And it's almost like a meditation. You know, food should be a meditation in a way that you are, you're, you're feeling fulfilled and it's like, it's almost, blocking your physical body in a way of allowing your your spiritual mind your, your intuition to come through and to it can be a meditation you know especially if you eat on your own and we eat in certain ways like snacks you know snacks is very easy to reach out some chocolate or crisps especially during like a movie or if you're watching something online perhaps you're eating something now but food connects us and the relationship with food is is beautiful and it's here to stay, which is great. But at current, there are probably many people that are eating alone because of this current situation in the world of 2021. And, you know, I really hope restaurants and cafes are available, you know, very soon for people to meet and to, to talk and to celebrate. And the same with many other different traditions as well across the world. Because food is what connects us. Uh, food is what we need, but it is it creates beautiful memories, and there are many to come. So, if you aren't much of a lover of cooking, um, you don't have to. 
just in you know you can just enjoy the food but if you don't make your own food as well uh, if you don't cook then please learn because it's a great life skill that can save you money and give you better nutrition and better health and you know what you're putting in your body the best food to eat is close to nature as possible when I go traveling to hot countries I usually just eat fruit only and some hot meals but usually a lot more fruit and I feel a lot more comfortable that way but it's it's a good thing to find different cultures and different countries when you have the opportunity and to try their traditional sweets their traditional dishes because you're understanding about the culture and the flavor and and the understanding so I hope you understood this video thank you for listening and you know nourish yourself watch what you're eating uh, keep it healthy and one tip if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to eat healthy just do smaller portions of the things that you love that are healthy and you'll be you'll be fine but it's not just food make sure you're getting water water is a very important thing that we need and not just tea and coffees but good water just water throughout the day is very important to us to keep us hydrated we are 75 percent water so we need moisture we need hydration in our body and we need to feel full and satisfied so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed listening to me <laughs> and i'll catch you next time for now goodbye